this as well. Obviously we don't have the equipment to do this ourselves. But 15,000 is, compared to our balance, a lot of money. So... Definitely a good plan for day two on the farm. I was, I was kind of expecting... I. I checked the, the grass last night and it hadn't grown and I think I uh, I slept until this morning about seven o'clock and then took a quick look at the grass still hadn't grown but obviously save and, re and reload has uh, adjusted that so the grass is on its second stage of growing. Um, I'm not planning on getting a grass roller at this time, primarily because grass rollers don't appear to do anything useful to a grass field. Um, base game, they'll provide a level of fertilization, which after you've cut grass and then um, or after the grass has grown, when you cut it, that adds one stage of fertilization. A grass roller is basically the cost of running a tractor over the field once. And obviously the bigger the roller, the more um, uh, the less time it's going to take you to roll the, the field. But. Uh, With precision farming, you have to add nitrogen, so that's going to be slurry fertilizer um, or the normal fertilization methods, solid or liquid. So, really, not going to be concentrating on rolling the grass fields. It may affect the yield. like the normal roller does. Uh, okay, let's hitch this up to the windrower. Pretty sure I am not going to be able to run the uh, baler on uh, this tractor. So let us turn the engine off for a minute. Uh, what is this? T5970. Oh yeah, we can run that. I wouldn't be surprised if we can run all of them. Which is that one, 19. Um, the baler. I'm fairly certain we're going to have to use what they gave us. Two hundred and forty feet. Yeah, that's not going to work for us. So I think for the most part we should be good here. This tractor is a three forty. Can most definitely run the uh, the mower setup that they've given us, and can run the baler. So I think what we'll do is.
Okay, we need to go to field 50. The problem is at 51 even. I haven't been to 51. Oh, it's behind our farm. It's behind field 50. Ha. Huh. There's our house. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this tractor over there. And then... We'll put a worker in our tractor and have that bring the windrower. While we get to mowing. Now, the other problem we're going to be facing here is because we're using precision farming, I don't believe field yields are as good um, with precision farming as they are in base game. So in all likelihood there's not going to be a lot left over at the end of it and we're not going to pay get paid much in, as a bonus for excess bales produced. Now we have a standalone wrapper. The biggest bales we're going to be able to make are 240 centimeter. 220 centimeter. 240s have to be um, hay, straw, that sort of thing, and basic grass. But if you want to wrap it, you're going to have to shrink the size. That's not too bad of a thing. Okay. Oh, sorry, Carl. I want to try and avoid stones as much as possible as well because that's an additional either additional cost of equipment or it's an additional cost of um, okay this is not where we want to be there's a dirt track there runs down 30 um, is there a dirt track here no okay so the next question is obviously this here is access to our field only and we want the field over at the back there um, it's like there might be something There might be something out by our farm. So I think we're going to our yard. Somewhere. gets us into that field and there is a farm track here um, oh yeah of course uh, can I get through that hedge there not maybe yes maybe absolutely that is kind of convenient but uh, technically this is probably a field we want to consider having one day when we can afford it meanwhile and our 
yard is over here. Okay. Seriously, okay, let's get this tractor to the gate. I'm hoping this is the problem. Knows where the road is. We'll need to keep an eye on that, obviously. work mode, control Y. I guess I can send my tractor back now. <laughs> Let's try that again. So, because this does its own swathing, we do not need the windrower. Which means we'll just abandon that in our yard. What I may end up doing is I'll send the 6S back for the the thing. The baler. It won't be able to run the baler but it should be able to haul it on the street. Then I can send it back for the other thing. Um, the wrapper. And we can actually do the wrapping ourselves with our tractor and I'll send this back for the bale pickup. So, uh, yes. Yeah, I completely forgot a lot of the mowers in 22 do include a swath mode. So we don't have to mess around so much with uh, with other things so as soon as we get back to the yard I'll jump out and see where the uh, 
six S's. But it would appear we're going to have a little bit of a problem with workers, I think, just shipping stuff around. I was kind of hoping that would work out. Obviously on maps like um, Giants providing the base game, that is actually a thing that isn't a problem. But uh, when it comes to mod maps, there can be a bit of an issue with uh, workers finding paths. Okay, let's go see. Oh, we're nearly there. Let's turn the worker off. And I think this is us. So, we have the windrow, we're not going to use it. I'm going to dump it here. Send him back to the store. He's managing that. Yep. Okay. So, good start. Now, the nice thing here is this field is fairly square. So, shouldn't be too much of an issue. The corner we've missed a little bit. With just doing straight up and down lines for the most part. I'll probably do another end row, the top end of here. And we can see where we go from there. But yeah, for a mod map, this is an uncharacteristically square field. So what we'll do here is uh, mow out that corner. Probably going to have a little bit of a problem doing a single pass through there with the the baler, but it shouldn't be too bad. I still didn't get all of it. Ooh. Go forward. what I should be doing is using the compass heading to get a much squarer finish on this. <coughs> but by doing the edge with the front bower it does mean that uh, it all falls in predominantly in that swath. So that's good. So I said this is this contract is definitely good for another 50% in the bank. It may be a little bit more lucrative than that but I really don't know
and the problem we have really is precision farming and how it interacts with um, contracts. You are not going to see as good a income from them. Not because, you know, the contract's still going to pay out 100%. It's just that the the yield you get is usually barely sufficient to cover the contract. You know, you don't have much leeway on a on a harvesting contract, which is effectively what a bailing contract is. Ugh, that sucks. Okay, time to hitch the six S up to the baler. Do that right about now. So, yeah, this is a big piece of kit, but we're only taking it on the road. Again, with the driving and the thing, I want to get this. Let's see if we can set the destination to here. No. Set the destination to here. Yeah. We're kind of stuck there with driving on the road rather than... driving through our yard, which is unfortunate. Okay. Try and keep as straight as I can. I kind of think in the grand scheme of things that piece of grass I missed there isn't going to be significant. Um, I guess um, we're going to keep the mowers here anyway. So uh, if we do have to cut any additional grass, um, we can do that. I mean, basically, I'll be able to hitch up the single mower at the front and the baler on the back to top it off if I can get away with it obviously if I can't get away with it then there's no point trying but we'll get we'll try and load bales as best we can and obviously, if you go for a 180 centimeter bale, you're going to get more bales, but you're going to have less between bales. If you go with 220s, that's less bales you have to take to sell. However, um, you do risk having an awful lot of waste in the baler at the end of the contract. Now, the other thing is, is if you do mix the size of your bales, you can't take different bales on the bale collector that they've given us. So they all have to be the same size. Well, they did give us crew, uh, what's it, GPS again. That is kind of one advantage. You can GPS with the mowers and then follow through GPS with the 
the baler as well and it should keep you well on target but as is usual I can pretty much eyeball this so I don't need to get all fancy our 6s does not have GPS um, and since we have precision farming in I don't know that I really need it um, because of the way the minimap works you can see where you've been so I could see where I've been doing that sunflower field um, I didn't need to see the texture change of the ground as we were applying the fertilizer so that's uh, a benefit I wonder where our success is I am really missing um, the vehicle inspector mod. I know there is a, there's a simple inspector um, available, um, but I'm not really great with it. Okay, our AR worker seems to be having a problem, so it sounds like it's time to do a jump to. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I see what you were doing. <laughs> um, yeah, sadly, the accuracy of the uh, worker does mean that um, yeah, clicking somewhere on the map, I obviously I told it to stop on the wrong side of the road. It's scraping down the side of that car why we're not moving fast um, so it was blocked by oncoming traffic in order to turn into oncoming traffic to stop anyway here's our yard entrance I'm so confused oh that's a silage bunker yes of course okay I'm gonna get used to this as we progress but for right now, we're kind of um, still learning the route. Alrighty. So I'll drop this back at the field entrance again, and we'll park off to one side. Actually, not a bad turn circle on this thing. So I'm guessing the most likely course of action on this farm, we will be cutting the grass in what is intended as the cow pasture and making hay, making silage and just generally working our way up to um, creating food for cows and then we'll buy some cows and off you go bye bye alrighty um, yeah so we'll, we'll generate cow food and um, then get started with some cows. I may buy some one-year-old cows because they're milk producers from the get-go and then allow the herd to expand over the course of the year. I think it's eight months as uh, juveniles and then uh, then they start breeding and it's every 10 months that they start breeding so it'll be second year before the, f the, the flock of cows starts to increase um, yes that but um, we'll be getting milk immediately on that um, so probably start looking at um, additional grass fields because they're good for income 
and um, needed for food. So yes, all that good stuff. Uh, sunflower field, I'm probably going to plant, um, I don't know, a cereal crop that produces hay, straw, straw, because cows. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to sell all of the sunflowers and then all of that cereal crop or whether we'll keep some back and um, start working our way towards being able to support pigs as well on the farm. But for right now that's not... Pigs are complicated and so it's probably going to be year three or four before we even start considering um, pigs as being something we do. And we also need to keep an eye on uh, 